This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Let's continue now with our color correction lesson. And uh, being as how the last lesson was also called color correction, yet all we did was adjust brightness and contrast, I guess we better go ahead and do some actual color corrections. But first, let's take a look at this clip of a worker in the High Sierra Volunteer Trail Crew discussing his individual motivation for participating and doing the work. But notice also that his face is in the dark. Um, so once again, what we're going to do is go ahead and look at brightness and contrast. Left click, hold it down, drag it over, plop it in, come over here, and then is where we make the adjustments. We want to be able to see his face. Yet we also want to return some of the contrast that was in there. All right, let's see what that looks like. To love the out of doors. You've just got to have a feeling that uh, this is God's creation. I mean, you can look around here and how can you all... That's a little better. We can at least see his face. Let's give it a little bit more of a punch. Just a little tweak on the contrast so that we can at least see his face in there okay now that's better now let's take a look at actual color corrections and what we'll do is look at what's known as the fast color corrector now watch what happens when we drag this into the clip and we let it go and here we have the fast color corrector and look at everything there is under this particular effect and there's just a whole bunch here and you're not going to use all of it, obviously, but some of it you will use. And for those of you familiar with Photoshop, you will definitely recognize the input levels slider. And they work exactly the same way in Premiere as they do in Photoshop. That being that if we take this slider that represents the bright part of the scale and we move it to the left, look at how everything gets brighter. Okay, let's pull this back across if I can get it and pull it. There you go. Now, if we want to darken the image, left click, hold it down and drag it towards the center and you can see how the darker parts of the image are getting darker. Now, this slider in the middle are the midtones. So you can do it this way or you can do it with the brightness and contrast slider. Now, I would prefer that you do it this way because you have more control over what's happening and you can put in a little more finer control on your contrast adjustments with this input levels than you do anything else. You can also do it with the left click and hold it slider. See how these move right here when you do it this way? It's just a different way of getting to the same place. Input gray, that's what you want to call it. See how that middle one moves? Watch it again. See how it moves when we adjust it? We can also grab this up here and move it. Notice the values are the same, input black, input black, gray, and white. Notice that these are all the same. You have sliders here and you have sliders here. The difference is that you can also grab this and do it. So, you know, many different ways to get to the same thing. Now, output black works the opposite from input. And you want to kind of leave this the way it is. You're not going to really have a whole lot of occasion to deal with the output levels. Now the other way that you can balance your contrast is to use the droppers. Now, this is a bit more complicated and a lot more work. I don't know why it's even in here, but be that as it may, here's how it works. You click on this, and we've obviously got total black, which is 000, an RGB. Click OK. And then we're going to get the dropper. Come over here and find the blackest part of the image. Now notice as I move the eyedropper, notice that these sliders move automatically. That's telling me where the darkest areas of this image are. So I'm going to go ahead and put one there. Now I'm going to come get the white dropper. Obviously that's a very easy thing to find, which is right there. And here we have a perfectly balanced contrast to brightness ratio. Let's take a look. It is shrinking so quickly and the areas which are allowed for us to be enjoyed in nature that grow naturally and that now that's being a little jerky because we haven't rendered it yet, so we'll render that in just one second. In fact, let's go ahead and just hit Control S. Now let's go up here and take a look at some of the color adjustments. And this is the hue balance and angle wheel, I guess for lack of a better way to put it. 
And what you do is you, again, you can do this one of two ways. You can either do it with the grab and hold sliders, or you can grab the middle of this thing and push it in any direction you want to. But look what happens to the color of the clip as we move it from place to place. It goes green, and as we bring it around, it shifts to blue and purple and pink, and then all the way back to over here. Now, if that's what you want, then great. If you want to back off on the saturation, if you want to put in what they call a desaturated effect. It's kind of the way they did Saving Private Ryan. That whole movie was shot with reduced saturation. I don't think it was done with taking everything back down to a particularly warm temperature balance, but you get the idea. Let's bring this back up to 100, which is where you're going to use it 99% of the time. And then here's our white balance eyedropper. And we can take this and find a gray or black item to click on. Let's do it again. And that gives you your automatic white balance. Now we also have some auto black level adjustments that we can do. Auto black level, auto contrast, auto white level, and auto black level. I repeat, come in, play with this, see what you like, experiment with it so you can see how it works. It does take some practice, but all your color controls are right here, and you've got all kinds of options in order to address the color. Now, there are some other color adjustment tools down here that you might want to take a look at. I'm not going to go into them here because you're not going to use them that much. Really, the one you're going to use more than anything else is the fast color corrector. Now, you can do leave color, luma corrector, luma curve, RGB color corrector, RGB curves. Let's take a look at that. Let's see where that put that RGB curves. And then here is where we can really have some very, very finite adjustments of our color. Reduce the green or we increase the green. And it works just like the curves dialog box in Photoshop. But like I said, the danger in using these is that you've got to be consistent from one clip to the next. So just make sure that you're keeping track of what you're doing. You want to save this preset. You go Save Preset. And then, of course, RGB Dur's Preset. Let's call this number 2. Hit OK. And now when you go from one clip to the next and you've made this adjustment, then you'll have uniformity from one clip to the next. So there you have the basic and sometimes detailed color adjustments in Premiere.